Hey, it's Monday night, and tonight on our show, even though the Constitution says you cannot have any royalty in this country, we have animation royalty with us. Ooh, nice. Thank you very much. I was a social studies teacher. Uh, Bob Bergen will be with us tonight, and we're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff about animation and Porky Pig and all the other, Tweety Bird, and the Union, and all the cool stuff that he's doing. Fantastic. Plus, we got some good tech tonight. Yeah, I got a few tech news pieces to talk about, and we have a question that came in. Client said 911. Guess Uh-oh. what? We're going to answer her it's question here on the show. Monday night, 911. And we're going <laughs> to talk about preamps. All right. All right. All that and more, more than you can handle on VoiceOver Body Shop, coming up right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. All right. <laughs> well, welcome to another festive Monday night here at uh, the Body Shop. It's festive because you're wearing that shirt. It's one of my yeah. Or I'm working at Trader Joe's. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> That's where I should go to get my shirts. <laughs> Trader Joe's. There you go. Just get a job yeah. there for a change. Well, I spent the weekend in Chicago land. Mm-hmm. What a that is a city's city. Did you enjoy any deep dish pizzas? I didn't, I didn't get any pizza. Did you have a hot dog with, uh, what do they put on it, coleslaw and uh, No, it was, I, I had, a, I had a veal Chicago? bratwurst with onions, and I said, hold the sauerkraut. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why, you don't like sauerkraut? No, I don't like sauerkraut. Does it make you toot? <laughs> that, that and a number of other things. <laughs> but uh, That loves me some sauerkraut. Yeah, no, Chicago was nice. Thank you, Chicago. 20,000 steps in one day. The pedometer smoke was coming out of my iPhone. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you didn't hurt yourself at all this weekend nope, r- I, riding your bike? I, I primarily <laughs> stayed off the bicycle this weekend, gave myself some time and, and so I, some time to heal before I go to Colorado tomorrow, where, you, where I intend to go and get hurt again on my bicycle. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, not not the intention at all. Folks, I've got the proper protective gear now. I've more. got knee pads and I've got elbow pads. Yeah. A lacrosse uh, helmet. and I have a chin uh, bar on my... I mean, I'm ready, man. All right. I'm that's good to know. Ready. Well, anyway, tonight on the show, Bob Bergen is with us. And Bob's... He's been knowing us a long time, but he's been you know, the voice of Porky Pig and Tweety Bird and a lot of other stuff that maybe you didn't realize it was him. Man, watch the credits in movies sometimes. You'll, You'll be see amazed him. how many see how many times you see this name, especially in that other voices. Dude called gets called in a lot for yeah. that stuff. So we'll, we'll talk about that kind of work. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk about creating characters, and we'll talk about the union because everybody's always asking questions. Even I'm asking Bob questions about the union. And you live here. And I do. <laughs> it's like if you live in L.A., you should automatically by osmosis know about the union. Right. <laughs> it's, it's there. It's everywhere. Right. The SAG credit union's right around the corner. <laughs> um, also, we're going to be talking about some technology stuff, and you've got some cool stuff. But first, it's time for... 
VoiceOver Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. It's time for the news. Your aging voice. Okay, it's confession time. Are you acting your age at the microphone? Well, you don't have to, you know. Training and experience overcome lots of barriers to what happens to our voices as we age. But the aging voice doesn't have to be a problem. Either as, either. as VoiceOver Pro Kim Handysides points out in a new article on VoiceOver Extra. One of the reasons I love voice acting is how it shatters the barriers of age, Kim writes. Over the past year, she's been hired to perform the voice of 22-year-olds and 62-year-olds, plus multiple ages in between. In many ways, she says, the microphone is much more merciful than the camera, but an aging voice can also be advantageous. Kim explains that the pitch of our voice doesn't change much as we age, until about 65 or so. The pitch of an untrained voice that golden age generally goes up for men mm. and down for women. Other changes that age include slower speech, elongated symbols, and more frequent pauses for air. And but, even elongated syllables, too. Yeah, I, I do that anyway. That's, anyway, But trained voices can, can work around that, Kim says. That's good to know. Yeah. And good things to keep in mind are that as we age, we gain more control over our vocal instrument, plus gain more confidence in our performances. Nevertheless, it doesn't hurt to sound like a senior when the need arises. And so lately, Kim observes a surge of work calling for middle age and senior voices, especially in the business-to-business -business sector. Think Morgan Freeham or Bill Nighy or Frances McDormand, Meryl Streep or Allison Janney. So, when approaching narration or a character to connect with seniors in a voice read, Kim uses descriptors like confidence, empathy, respect, and peer-to-peer. -peer. Technically, she'll relax her throat and drop into the lower register, but not always. And it depends on the character. Watch for this demand in older voices to grow, Kim adds. It's still a largely untapped market. Check out the details in this article and hundreds more now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Mm. You know, when seeing as I'm on the verge of being ancient. Of that age bracket. Yeah. The I one mean, mentioned. Yeah, I can't wait for Medicare, but that's just a couple of years away. Um, you know, I, I know I can do a younger voice. Mm -hmm. It's just up in pitch, you know, and a little bit. And a little brighter, what? A little brighter, a little just like a little bit brighter. Shift. Yeah, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I can. I also learned. I remember drama in high school. It's like you want to be old, just let the energy go out of your belly button. Suddenly, you're a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where the energy goes? That's apparently so. Worked right. great on stage. I'm going to plug the be belly button. Keep All that right. from happening. Yes. So, what's new in tech this week? Oh, uh, boy. So, um. Not in any particular order here. Well, I just got an, uh, over the weekend, a, a longtime client had problems with her Audient ID22. And, um, you know, man, I've been such a fan of the Audient products. And the ID22 was their first product to market in terms of an audio interface mm -hmm. with a preamp. But maybe it's just, this is just what happens when you release, you know, when a pop product is popular. Right. The Scarlet 2i2 comes to mind. The more that they're that are out there, the more chances something's going to go wrong with some of them. Mm -hmm. But that just seems to be a trend with the Audient ID22. With a, you know, a few of them are starting to fail. And uh, you know, it's one thing when it's a hundred fifty dollar project product. It's another thing when it's a six hundred dollar product. Right. It makes it harder for me to want to continue recommending it. But perhaps they just haven't built them. For the long haul, I, I maybe don't they're, they're know. not quite as heavy duty as they say. Yeah, I don't know. I, the I still, I still have yet to find a single flaw with the ID4. That's the little brother of the ID22. It's much more simple, much less going on inside the box, and likely because of that, should be more reliable. Hoping so. But um, anyway, ID22s keep you know keep an eye on yours. Make sure it's 
uh, you have a backup. Make sure you got something else ready to plug in in case yours starts to give you trouble. Right. Um, speaking of backups and maybe something that you might want to have with you when you travel, that mixer face from Centrance, we mentioned it last week. They are reportedly in the wild. Um, apparently everybody that did the Indiegogo campaign that supported them and pre-ordered one four and a half years ago now has one. Uh, so they're, they're out there. I reportedly have one waiting for me at home, sitting on my porch. Had I been there today, I would have brought it today. But I'm going to bring it with me on my trip to uh, Colorado to see Maxine tomorrow, and I will sh- shoot something while I'm there. I'll at least use it for something. I'll use right. it on the show or What's well, a nice whatever. remote unit? It's, mm-hmm. This is what this thing was built for. Mm-hmm. It was for remote use. It's got be- built-in batteries, and it works on an iPhone, which I don't have, but it should also work on an, uh, an Android. So I am curious to try it on my Android phone, see how well it works. Cool. Um, so there is a, a review currently up by Bo Weaver. He was the first one to get one and get a review up. And as far as I know, the only place you'll find it is, is at the VoiceOver Pros Facebook group. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but we'll have one of our own soon. And okay. speaking of other new stuff, yeah, we have a microphone coming. It's coming right here to the VOBS shop, right to the body shop here. It's the uh, one I mentioned earlier, the Townsend Lab Sphere tw- L22. I know. This is one heck of a piece of, this is one heck of a toy. And Dan's going to have some time to play with it while I'm out of town. This may be the last mic you ever have to buy. I'm just saying. We've said it before. I'm just saying, but it's something to, something that's going to be fun to play with. It's, it's a mic with many faces, but not only does it have many faces, it can be arranged and aimed and shaped and everything all inside the computer. So. This is going to be a lot of fun. Thomas Machen, good friend of the show, he 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 hooked us up with this. So wow. can't wait to try. We should it. Have, you should be here in the body shop soon. So that's exciting. It's going to make me sound like God. Well, if God had a, a Elam two fifty one, yes. which he probably does, he probably does. That's just one of the many mics that thing can emulate extremely well, and that's a particularly expensive mic. So if it was me and I had one of these, I'd probably start with the most expensive mic on the list, see how I sound on that, and I'd keep working my way down the list until I find the one that I like. I mean, you know, this thing's emulating mics that are now used on the used market, like the U47, right. the C- v- v- CV12, I think it is, from AKG. These mics are worth 10 grand plus. So this thing's supposed to do a dang good job of it. Cool. Um, and the last thing I worked on very, 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 very recently was setting up a VO booth for Joe Cipriano, um, he and his wife Anne have uh, a new home in Encino, and don't mention the address. I will not. Encino is a big place, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, but it's uh, we just put together your classic PVC and moving blanket booth. Gotta love it because he needed something ASAP, and we're gonna get a nice booth ice with isolation. You know all the fixings right. eventually here. But uh, we were able to, I went to, went to Osh this morning. I had drawn out, wrote down how many T's, elbows, how much pipe I need. Here's the thing. When you draw <laughs> it all out on the paper and you're thinking, I need so many lengths of 10-foot pipe, so many lengths of 8-foot pipe, thinking they're going to have either 8-foot or 9-foot pipe. When you get there and the rack says that the pipe is 9 feet long, then, then you're like, Ah, because now everything doesn't measure out, right? Well, you get a little extra and you got to buy another. Well, which is it, right? Is it too long or too short? Then when you get to the job site and find out it actually is 10 feet long, (laughs) that the sign was wrong on the thing. It's like, oh, I found out that 10 feet of PVC fits inside my Subaru Forester precisely from the windshield on the dash, diagonal across the car to the rear window. It just fits inside a Subaru Forester. Yeah. But we've got a video online on our YouTube channel of us building one of yes. those booths yes, in my mom's backyard and garage. Right. In we Orange started and, the prep in, in, your, in their yard, right. and then it was finished at Ann Ganguza's yes. house. <laughs> it's a, it's check a great it out. video. It's it a, really it is. It is a great video. But it came together well, and, and he's, um, he's recording work right now in there, so it's but, working out. The man works. That's He does. Him. All right. Well, we got lots more. If you got a tech question for us, Jack Daniel is sitting by as our social media czar tonight in the chat room, and uh, he will relay those questions to us. And also, if you got a question for Bob Bergen, also a good time to get it. Be nuts to not be asking questions tonight. 
The guy With loves the guy to answer questions. Like Bob. Absolutely. All he right, so stuff. stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear, and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. There are two types of people in the world. Those just getting started in voiceover and those who are established but want more work. VO2GoGo has got you covered. If just getting started in voiceover, VO2GoGo's Getting Started in VoiceOver class is a deep dive into exactly how to do it right. With video lessons taught by David H. Lawrence the 17th with downloads, homework, quizzes, and actual on-cam work. And the price is right. It's absolutely free. How does he do it? Just go to vo2gogo.com forward slash start and you'll get instant access to the class. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash start. Now, if you're already a working voiceover talent and you want more work, and who doesn't, then vo2gogo's pro program is for you. This is the most comprehensive, complete voiceover support system in the world with classes, workouts, private coaching, demo production, and more, teaching you the art, the commerce, and the science of voiceover. If that sounds like it was built for you, it was. And you can get instant membership at vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. Getting started or going pro, go to vo2gogo.com now. It's everything you need to be a successful voiceover talent. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, and now it's time for totally unrehearsed discussion, because when Dan and George talk, people listen. And sometimes they pay us for it. Should we some, tell them how they do that? We can. <laughs> if you'd like to pay us to do this, although some people, hey, can you give me some advice? No. <laughs> uh, we just got a 911. I got a text, a 911 text from a client who happens to have worked with both of us. So because our show is getting ready to go in the air, I was like, do you mind if we answer, actually answer your question? That's what we're going to do. Go That's for it. That's not normally yeah. what happens, yeah. Yeah. but... If you're going to pay us to work, not doing it on the show live, yeah. you can get us through our websites. I'm at georgethetech.com, and that's where you can book my services. And Dan, you're over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. That's right. It's a great URL that, God, I was lucky to get. But uh, <laughs> there's all sorts of things that we can do for you, uh, help you set up a home studio. I think it's really important that we teach you how to do it right. Because... As someone once said, better to teach someone to fish than give them a fish and feed them for a day. That's right. I, I, it's, when it comes to audio engineering, I teach them how to fish for the right fish with the right tools instead of go forth into the Walmart and come back with things. I never do that. No. You know, it's like, you need this, 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 this. That's never walk into a retail store not knowing what you want. That's right. Because especially if you go into Banjo Emporium, they're going to say, you're going to see Hawaiian vacation written across your forehead. I'm a voice actor and I want to, <laughs> I want to have my own studio. Never a good idea. Never, never a good idea. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about preamps in a second, but let's solve Amelia's problem here since yes. she's engaged both of us. Yes. Well, she, um, she got some new gear. It finally came. I think she expected it to come more quickly. 
but she's got a demo to record tomorrow. So she's under the gun. She got a new Shure KSM32 mic, which nice I mic. recommended to her because it should be a little smoother sounding, not right. too bright or harsh. And a good old Steinberg UR12, which I've been having a very hard time finding a fault in that little sucker. Um, she's got the two of those, and she's got to record a demo tomorrow. She's having trouble kind of just learning how to dial it in. So in like five minutes, when someone's got a new mic and an interface, what do you tell them? How do they get started? And this is a mic that has a few switches on it. Right. So we got to make sure they're in the right place. There's, there's a pad, and there's a... There's a, a roll-off switch. Right. And how do you make sure it's pointed in the right direction? So you start with the mic side. I'll start with, and then I'll finish up on the interface side. All right. Well, uh, so what's the question? How do I set it all up? Well, yeah, I think she's already had gear, but this is a step up for her. So okay. she's not familiar with the way it sounds to her in her headphones. Well, number one, don't listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, now, now Bob Bergen will say, well, of course you wear headphones if you're listening to a director. Yeah. But if you're not listening to a director, who are you listening to? If you're listening to your own voice with a little, maybe a tiny little bit of latency, it might throw you off. Plus, you become enamored with the sound of your own voice. And we all know that it's more important to tell the story right. and trust your voice. That out of the way, though. She, of course, is setting up something new. So right. she needs to make sure she can hear something while she's setting it up, I guess. Right. Well, you, my process would be set it up the way you normally would. Proper mm -hmm. mic technique, the right acoustical environment, mm -hmm. and record something. Yeah. And then let somebody who knows exactly what it's supposed to sound like listen to it. Right. Instead of, well, I sound great. The fact of the matter is, is she doesn't hire herself. Right. But if you just got the gear just now yeah. and you're recording a demo with some producer in the morning with your own equipment in the studio, right? obviously very, very last minute stuff here. Right. <laughs> what the heck should we, she do? <sighs> I just got some new stuff, Mr. Producer. Can we do this a little later? That would be one. That would be one really good option. Yes, I agree with that totally. Uh, you know, because she wants to do it right. Yeah, and she wants to make sure it's all working, and yeah. she doesn't want to use him as a test market. I agree completely. Uh, so that's one way. Yeah. The other way is okay. You can listen on headphones, but what you're hearing might not necessarily be what they're hearing on the other end. It's true. It's true. When you're setting up your own gear and trying to listen to yourself, even now when I hear my own self on the show in my headphones. It's quite different than what you guys are probably hearing out there. It's, it's, I'm hearing an impression of what I sound like because right. I'm hearing my own voice transmitting through my jaw. You know, it's just, it's a weird sound, especially right. with sealed headphones. So, but if she knows how to set proper levels and she understands proper mic techniques, set it up the way her old mic used to be. Yeah. And talk to the producer. If she's doing a live, says, how does this sound? Yeah. It's a and demo. He says it's, it's not fine. a live gig. This is a demo. Right. You're hiring them. You're, they're not hiring you. You're hiring them. So take the time with them to help make sure your sound's dialed in. If they don't want to start the project until it's dialed in, then go ahead and, and reschedule it. If they're a, a reputable demo, deal, de demo dealer, demo, demo producer, dealer. Mm. They, they, should, they should be understanding of a situation like that. But just make sure the pad is on zero. The low cut switch is almost always on. Oh, it's, well, no, it depends I think on, it's, on what depends on the studio. I think it's for women's voices in yeah. any home studio. It'll, why do they need that. anything below 100 hertz? Right. Turn it on. And then uh, the UR12, you've got a gain control on the far left. That's the gain control for your mic. Start it at about mm -hmm. 3 o'clock. It's that's, a really good start. That's place. the sweet spot. It's a good I place thought. to start yeah. for most condenser mics. And um, that direct monitor button, turn that off, right? That's what's, that's what's letting you hear yourself while you're recording, mm -hmm. and that's going to screw you up. Leave your headphones off, record, and play it back once you get everything functioning. Right. If it still sounds weird to you, check the mic placement. Is it facing the wrong direction? Don't assume <laughs> anything. Because a brand new logo. mic, if you're yeah. not familiar with it, sometimes the mic can be facing the opposite direction from where it is. So make sure it's facing the right way. If it's facing the wrong way, one way to tell really quickly is it sounds like you're far away, even when you're close, and it sounds very kind of muddy sounding, like it's like you're filtered somehow, like you're talking with your hands over your or mouth. Or on the other side of the room. Yeah. It means you're probably... If you sound like you're <laughs> on the other side of the room, then definitely yeah. check your settings. She's on Twisted Wave. Right. Go into audio, input, and make sure it says Steinberg UR12 is the input. Right. Do not let it say system setting. Because it will do, the Mac will record whatever input it sees, and that could be the mic right. of your Mac. That would be really bad. 
Yes. So double check those settings. Send us a sample. I'll give a listen to it, uh, you know, first thing in the morning or tonight, and we'll let you know if anything's totally out of whack. All right. Uh, Gerard, Gerard McGuire. Yes, That's Gerard. a question. Yes. It says, while I was away, I left my Duet 2 at home. Uh, needing an interface, I took George's advice and bought a Yamaha AG03, which I happen to use here in this Bing. very studio. Uh, I love it. Now at home, should I go back to my Duet 2? <laughs> Is the question. more expensive Duet that much higher quality? My ears aren't good enough to hear it. Thanks, Gerard. I don't know. Apples to apples. You'd have to set them up in the same room and do an A-B test. I don't know. Do you? I, I think maybe the AG-03 maybe is slightly noisier, maybe. I haven't heard a sound out of it, except, except my golden tones. It's, very, it's a very <laughs> clean piece of kit. I, I would use whatever you're familiar with and what's, what you're comfortable using right. in your home studio. So if it's still a duet to... Keep using the duet too. As soon as your duet starts causing you any trouble, which it can, not saying it will, but it can, um, then maybe that's a good time to switch over to the Yamaha. You know, just but just stick with what's working for for now. Right. What you're familiar with, what has been consistent for you, just keep using it. Don't worry about which one is slightly better sounding. Right. Use the one you like. Usually, somebody at the other end can't tell the difference in a hundred years. As long right. as you're the right acoustics, right mic technique, and all that other stuff. So preamps. we got a few more minutes. We're yeah. running out of time, but let's talk a little bit. We talked about actually several preamps tonight, but right. all of them were baked into audio interfaces. Right. So your UR12, your AGO, AGO3, your ID22, your Scarlett 2 i 2 We mentioned a yeah. ton of them. Yeah. All of those have mic preamps in them. Right. And so, usually very good ones. Yeah. These days, man, I'll tell you, the preamps, they're baking into these little interfaces is getting better and better. I mean, it's really quite... Ama- Apparently, reportedly, the Mixer Faces preamp is really great. The ones in the audience are really great. The UR12 never had a complaint from anybody about that thing. So when do you buy a box, a standalone box that you stick a on your desk? dollars thing. And rock. Yeah. So when, when does that happen? When, when do you think? When you are making a lot of money, well, one, you can afford one of those. Because, as we like to say, you don't buy great equipment to get work you work to get great equipment and generally if you if you're a good voice actor your voice is going to carry properly over a properly set up regular digital interface with the right preamp if you have a condenser mic something that has a decent amount of sensitivity right anything with at least 45 50 db of gain should be fine right so why do some of your high-end clients like Mr. Cipriano and, and various other people, why do they go for these big expensive preamps? Does it help them perform copy better or? You know, I, some of it may be slightly, you know, psychosomatic. I mean, one, but also when you start getting into the nitty gritty, once right. you've learned the way your voice sounds, the way your studio sounds, and you've heard it a thousand times, and then you get to try recording your voice in other studios, mm-hmm. I think that's where it starts to come into play. Right. When you start hearing you on another commercial or a commercial studio right. and you hear yourself through those monitors and you go, what is it they're using? I think that's what starts to plant that seed of, right. I need better gear, I need more gear. Right. And I but need you got to get into that. those studios to hear that. Right, right. Which is part Those of that. folks use that gear because they can, because they've used gear like that all their lives and their careers in other studios, so they want to have the same stuff. They, they, they also use it because sometimes they want to have some special sauce on their audio that is going down the line on IPDTL, on Source Connect, on ISDN. Right. You know, so they want to send out a pre-sweetened sound. That's where having a standalone preamp uh, channel strip, sometimes we call it, is, you know, becomes a lot more important. Cool. You know, so All right. don't get caught up in it too much until you've already dialed everything else in. Right. It's like the seventh thing on the list of Things that make a big difference in yeah. your sound, in my opinion. Right. I love it when people say, I've got this USB mic. Will a preamp help? Oh, guess what? <laughs> no. It's baked right in. It's if you have a USB mic, the preamp <laughs> is in the box. It's Some inside. of them are better than others. Yeah. Anyway, Bob Bergen is sitting by patiently. Yes, and we're he gonna, is. He's going to join us in just a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk about all the stuff that he wants to talk about. And some stuff you probably want to talk about. And all the stuff that you want to talk about. And one, Yeah, you guys better be asking questions. Lots of questions. Get in there. Coming up here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'll be right back. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. 
The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, we'll stop. Hey everybody, I'm supposed to talk about one of our sponsors and do this camera. So I'll do that now. This is, <laughs> we're about to talk about our favorite audio technology for connecting your studio to others around the world. And that is Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. Source Connect Now, VISDN, all sorts of, they have an unbelievable selection of connectivity tools. Um, the one you're probably the most likely going to need in the near future if you don't already have it, is Source Connect. Source Connect now, you should have now. You should absolutely know how to use it. It's totally free. Go get it. No excuses. Source-elements.com slash live, or where is it? Live.source-elements.com. One of those. Go get, um, not live, but now. Go get those from Source Elements. Get it up and running. That is totally free. The standard version of Source Connect is not free, but you can get a 15-day free trial. That is what you're going to be using to connect to all the big studios in the world. If you're playing up to the next level, you need it. Get it. Go give it a try. Don't need to have an iLock key thingamajiggy. Don't worry. We'll help you out, and so will they. Source Elements, thank you so much for your support. We'll be right back over here with Dan and Bob Bergen. They're right over there. This is the Latin Lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on Voice Over Body Shop. You know, Bob Bergen is the current voice of Warner Brothers cartoon characters. Porky Pig and Tweety Bird, and formerly hosted Jep, a kid's version of it, the popular game show Jeopardy. He's also known for voicing characters in the English dubs of various anime. He's also very act a very active member of SAG-AFTRA, advocating for the rights and benefits of union membership. And let's welcome Bob Bergen. I just want to hang a Christmas ornament right, right there. there. Yeah, just there like, you go. Like, yeah. You can see my son's bird. He just has to pull on right? it all the time. All yeah. right. Anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you here. You've been on many years ago. A long time we were, ago. Back when we were back when we were EWAS. Over a and, telephone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And well, you were on camera. Was I? You were. All right. You're, he remembers it well. I do. I watch it daily, give myself really? a residual. <laughs> anyway, so you you're originally from St. Louis. I am. How long have you been out here in LA? Oh, gosh. My dad took a job here when, when, when I was 14. I had no choice. I mean, okay. if I wanted to stay with a family, but right. I really wanted to be here because this is where voiceover and cartoons were. Right. So how early were you interested in doing that kind oh, of stuff? Oh, my God. Since I was like five. Yeah. I wanted to be Porky Pig when I was a five-year-old kid. And my mom said, you can't be Porky Pig or Jewish. And I didn't know what that meant because, you know, I wanted to hang a Christmas ornament on your mustache. So that's how Jewish we were. Um, but I... I I, I, we moved here when I was 14, and I figured, oh, Mel Blanc's old. I'll just call him up and say, buddy, listen, I know I've seen you on TV. You're not you're not a spring chicken. Right. I want to be your pig. Right. And um, I found his phone number in the in the phone book. You found his phone number I did. in the phone yeah, book. I found his phone number in the phone book, and I called him up. I taped the conversation, which is 100% illegal. I don't recommend people right. do that. You still have it? It's on my website, yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, i got to give that a listen. Yeah. Um, so you hear 14-year-old me saying, I want to do what you do. And uh, during the course of the conversation, he mentioned the name of the studio he was working at that week. He didn't say the day or the time, but he mentioned the name of the studio. Right. So when I hung up with him, I called the studio pretending to be his assistant. <laughs> and I said, hi, Mr. Blank. Uh, I'm, I said, I'm calling for Mr. Blank, and, I, and I'm, I'm confirming his uh, appointment for Thursday at, 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 at 11. And, and they said, we've got him on the books for Wednesday at 9. 
I went, I'm looking at the wrong day in the calendar. I'm so sorry. So I said to my mom, I'm skipping school on Wednesday. We're going to go watch Mel Blanc work. Yep. So when we got to the studio, uh, and my mom was really cool about that. We got to the studio. I told the receptionist that we were guests of Mel Blanc, and she said he's right in there. And I walked into his booth, and I said to his producer, hi, we're really good friends with the receptionist. And she said we could watch. So I watched him work, and I realized he's still doing this, and I'm still 14, and my voice hadn't changed. So I left that studio, and I called Hanna-Barbera, and they referred me to Dawes Butler. And I studied with Dawes and everybody else that, that taught voiceover at the time. And to make a long story short, when I was 18, I got my first agent, I got my first job. Uh, what was your first job? My first job was Spider-Man and his amazing friend. Ooh. I was an amazing friend. <laughs> and, and, um, and then I spent five years as a tour guide at Universal Studios going, look, it's a shark, because I had to eat. I had to feed myself. Exactly. Yeah. So it was a nine-year journey from first voiceover class to working actor. Wow. I See, people need to learn to be patient. It's you gotta not be patient. an overnight well, thing. It depends. Do you want a career or do you want to work? And I right. wanted a career. I didn't really care. I would, I'd, be, I'd be thrilled to wait tables to wait for the big job. I right. didn't care about how many jobs I was doing. It was the quality of the work that I really cared about. Right. So that right. time frame seems to be consistent to, to this day. I, it I, is. We've talked to a lot of voice actors mm -hmm. who are currently successful. There seems to be a, like a nine to ten year sort of ramp up. I don't think it's like it's like in stone that it's no, nine to ten years, no, but I think the not. people that, hey, if I take a class and make a demo, I'll work. No, if you're brilliant, you'll work. But if you're if your goal every time you audition is to book the job, it's a bad goal to have. Your goal should be to have fun. Number one, yeah. doing what you love, and number two, be the best actor you possibly can. That's right. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so you did the Steven Spielberg's thing essentially. You just sort of moved in on kind this. Kind of, and, yeah, yeah, I mean, kind I, of. And, that, and it takes chutzpah to do that. I think people need to understand if you've got to make yourself known. You when know, you, when you get there, the worst thing we do is put limitations on ourselves. And mm -hmm. I think because I was a kid, picking up the phone, calling Mel Blank and calling mm -hmm. Dawes Butler, mm -hmm. I didn't think this was an unusual thing to do. And it, and then you become an adult with with common sense and I guess nerves and shame. And you're like, oh, I can't do that. That's overstepping. Well, the worst thing they're going to say is no. no. Right. So who cares? You're no worse off than you were without trying. Exactly. Good lesson to learn there. Learning to take rejection. That'll get you anywhere. Well, the <laughs> thing with voiceover or anything as an actor, I mean, as a voiceover actor, you're auditioning a lot more than on camera. Right. And I, I always tell my students, you weren't rejected. You just weren't selected. Right. There are so many reasons why that brilliant read didn't get you that job, mm -hmm. but today's audition is an insurance policy for another one. So if the client didn't buy you, the casting director might think, you're brilliant. Dan, you're right. really good. I'm going to get you something somewhere, so I'm going to keep sending you stuff. I'm going to keep sending you auditions, right. and I, I really want you to book something. All right. Uh, if you're just joining us, boy, you've missed a lot already. In the you, first missed, you missed Christmas ornaments on a, on a mustache. Yes. Um... Bob Bergen's our guest. If you got a question for him, throw it in the chat room. And maybe someone will be watching the chat room. I am. I am. I'm George watching, is watching the chat, the chat room. room I'm tonight. trying. Yeah. Put Jack. a Q in front of it, will yeah. you? Oh. Put the word, the letter Q, Q for question. I know. That'll help. Thanks. Throw it into the chat room, and George is watching it until Jack Daniel finishes his session or whatever it is he had to run. Working out voice with. actors. Yeah, jeez. All righty. Uh, so, how did you get to be Porky Pig? I was fortunate. I had a great agent. Mel Blank passed away in 1989. They held auditions. And I had an agent who got me in for, for the auditions. I had about a dozen callbacks. Um, how, many, how many other people had auditioned? Oh, I'm you? sure hundreds. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you audition at that time in your agent's office and then right. callbacks, et cetera, et cetera. I had no idea what my competition was. By the way, I've had to re-audition five times in 28 years. So they, they they just didn't trust the fact that you've been doing it. I, you know, those of us who do classic characters don't have a lifetime contract. So you get a brand new producer, brand new show. They're like, well, let's let's see who else is out there. Right. So I'm I'm doing a new series right now, which I had to audition for. And my philosophy has always been, if somebody's better, they deserve it. I know that I'm going to go in there and kill it. I know right. I will. I won't kill everything, but I know that I will kill. Right. And I'll have fun with it, and I'll be able to bring things to the character that. 28 years of experience uh, allows me to. Right. So if somebody else is better than that, God bless them. I had 28 great years. Have they changed the characters at all? I mean, especially the Warner Brothers characters you've worked on. Depends mm -hmm. on the on the on the producer and depends right. on the job. I, I will tell you that Mel Blanc passed away in 1989 before mm -hmm. the internet, before cell phones. 
before Uber. So right. we do situations now where Porky has a cell phone. Porky was an Uber <laughs> driver in a cartoon. Right. I think they called it a goober driver in that particular episode. <laughs> so we're doing, it's pop culture references that Mel Blanc never did. Right. So I've got to find ways to r refer to today and still keep the integrity of the character. Right, the classic nature of the character. Exactly, yeah. All right. So what goes in, you, you do a lot of other uh, shows. I mean, you're you're a constantly working character voice actor. Yeah, the majority of what I do is not classic characters it's creating new new ones right yeah what's your process for doing that i mean you'll get a script and it's like okay bob make something out of it. yeah this. you get a script with a picture a, a short description and a few lines a few scenes of dialogue uh one of the things i tell my students is don't think of these as lines think of these as scenes a scene has a beginning a middle and an mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. and a scene also has an unheard scene partner in the audition we don't hear the scene partner but your character is relating to that scene partner Here's the mistake people make. They pick a funny voice and they read funny lines in funny ways. Right. Well, you're not acting. Right. You're just reading. What's the intention? Exactly. Who right. am I talking to? Right. What is our relationship? Where are we in this scene? It's and, and the microphone is the ear of your scene partner. Where you are on that mic from scene to scene corresponds with the scene. So that variety, that audio variety, is actually an audio illusion of your versatility as an actor. So it's, it's the, the same choice as an on-camera actor has to make when you create a character for, for animation. Physically play the character, the voice will follow. Act and react. Think about the in-between, and if that information isn't there on the script, make it up. Right. Because if you don't make choices, you're just reading lines. Right. It does, you can't make a wrong choice because nobody's in your home studio to, to tell you what you're doing is wrong. Exactly. But it's all about making choices. Yeah, so you have to ad lib. You've got you've to come up with all sorts of stuff in your head and not be afraid to try and gotta take risks yeah. i'm a big fan of ad-libbing as long as you don't try to improve on the writer right yeah you know you want if they're in the booth going well they yeah. probably won't be because yeah. your audition your first round will be in your, in home, your home studio, studio right but you have to respect the writer if you have something so outside the box make that take two but right. take one is exactly what they're looking for it's been through so many layers of approval to mm -hmm. get to this point where they're auditioning you Right. That you have to give them what they have in their head and then try something else. I will tell you that oftentimes it's that creative take two that gets me the callback, but at the callback, they redirect right. me to take one. Take one. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. That's the way the, the way they think. Sure. You caught their attention with something. That's right. And, and it's like, okay, but we know you can do this and that sort of thing. Now, you're an established talent here in Hollywood. To some. <laughs> to some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've been here a while. Um, people who are trying to break in. From what I've noticed, it's not a closed set. There's occasionally people filtering in, but there's an awful lot of people looking from the outside. Yeah. What do you tell people like that? Then what's what's going to make the difference for them? The cream floats to the top. Yeah. Brilliant. Everybody wants to hire the next brilliant thing. Right. Um, I've been teaching 30 plus years. I can count on less than two hands. Brilliant has come to my class. Where the first time at the mic, I went just a matter of time. Right. Um, Bottom line is, are you willing to do what it takes to try to even compete in this business? If you want animation, you got to live in Los Angeles. If you want animation, you got to be in the union. Cartoons are going to be union right. uh, because they hire celebrities. So right. but whether it's a series or a feature, they still hire celebrities. Right. Therefore, you've got to be in the union. And your characters have to be original. Nobody needs a valley girl. Nobody needs a witch. Nobody needs an old man. They need an original old man. They need right. an original witch. So it's not how many voices you can do, how many solid original characters can you do. And when you make a demo, I mean, I didn't have the internet when I was starting out. I could go to Atlas, CESD, SBV, DPN, William Morris, and listen to the working actors animation demos and go, well, if I was starting today, that's what they don't need. They already yeah, represent they already got that. that. I've right. got to give them originality. So if you're just going to regurgitate what they already represent, you're wasting your time. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. All right, once again, we're talking with Bob Bergen here on Voice Over Body Shop. And uh, if you've got a question for him, and I'm sure there are plenty, get it oh, yeah. in the chat room. They are flying. Are in. they? Uh, oh, good. It's, yes, good. Sir. it's good to know. Oh, good. We even got the question. Uh oh. Which the, you'll know about later. The you'll question? Know, you'll know the question. There's a the question? So, well, yeah, oh, know, I'm yeah. scared. You'll know that one. Yeah. Which ornament would look best on this nostril? There you go. Little technology. What, yeah. Do you have a home studio? I do. What do you got in your home studio? I have studio? no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> 
I have no uh, just, I can tell here's press, I, press the red I button and go. Red, so you never my, touched you, the red one. You've been to my studio. <laughs> no. So my home studio I, I, I own Randy Thomas's acoustic systems booth. All right. Okay. I had that booth in my office for over a year before I had the nerve to hire somebody to plug it in because I was terrified of technology. Mm. I, I painted it, it's pretty, it's got it's it's, it's green and white like right. my office. Right. Um I have no idea what I have in there. I know that um uh uh Pat Fraley gave me my, my, my current microphone. He called it the Chinese Neumann. I'm sure you know what the Chinese Neumann is. There's there's so many of them. Okay. He said, they don't, he said they don't make it anymore because they, they got sued or something like that. Um, and I push record and I go. And if it ever breaks, I'm, I call George. So uh, so far it hasn't broken and we're going to keep it that it's way. It's been pretty reliable, hasn't it? I, I am just not a techie person. Right. Well, you don't have to be a techie person. As well, you heard. I mean, well, I mean, I guess you kind of do if you want to be. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to be. I don't have Source Connect. I don't have ISDN. I don't want to produce from my house. I right. want to act. Right. That's that's what the promo guys do. I yeah. Mean, and that's that's what they have to do. When you're hired, you're going into a big studio for animation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 what do you do when you go in there? I mean, it's like I drink coffee. Your, yeah. You know. I yeah, mean, you know, there's food there. And yeah, yeah. if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Pixar has better food. Ah. They have great. Good they to have, know. Yes, they have great mm. food all throughout the day. Um. I, you know, every every job is different. Every studio is different. Uh, for the most part, they usually will email me my scripts and storyboards before so mm -hmm. I can prepare. Mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming very common for episodic or TV animation where you, as you work, um, you, you can watch the storyboard on a monitor so you can see the writers and the, right. and, and the animator's intent, the right. body language, the facial expressions. It's, it's just, it's, um, it helps influence your, your performance. In the old days... Uh, you would get the script when you got there. Right. It was an eight-hour session, up to eight hours. You would do a table read, take a right. break, and record. And we don't do any rehearsal really anymore. They rehearse on on tape. Right. But for the most part, we're just kind of winging it. And the second or third time you ever say those words, that's a print. Let's move on. Right. And and you're it's just you usually in the studio. Is, it depends. Is, is, there, is there like uh, you know. You know, you have a bunch of people in the studio. I think for episodic, they have as many cast members as who are available that day. I mean, I did a session this morning, and it was Porky and Daffy, and it was me and Eric Bowser. Um, Yosemite Sam was busy, so we skipped that episode <laughs> today. Um, you know, he had things to do. Um, but for features, you, you're by yourself. Right. And it's you and the director, and you don't even know what the whole script is. You work on the pages that you're in that day. Mm -hmm. So you need a, a director who really understands the other characters and can feed you lines as right. best as they possibly remember the other actor playing it. Right. So it's, um, it's a whole different thing. But, yeah, you have to have a good imagination. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a professional. I try. I know. And they pay you the good bucks to do it. On occasion. Yes. The... One of the things that you're really active with is with sag after yes. with the union. Yes. Why should people join union? How can they join the union? It's not like a, it's not just an easy thing to do. You got to, no. you got to earn the opportunity Correct. to do it. Why should they join the union? It depends what they want out of their career or if they want a career. Right. I would say the majority of people going into voiceover today don't want a career. They just want to work, which is why they're taking crappy offers. And that's why they're buying a microphone, then taking a class, and then trying to get work. I wanted a career. I wanted a pension. I wanted uh, uh, health benefits. And I wanted residuals. I don't make a living at my session fees. I can't make a living at session fees. It is the residuals. And the, the I would say the majority of my annual residuals are from animated features. So that is what keeps you going during the slow months. Uh, that's what keeps me from waiting tables. And that's what keeps me from doing online voiceover for a hundred bucks a job because I don't have a job this week. Right. Uh, it's the residuals that keep coming in. So for me, that's the reason to join the union. Okay. So how does one do that? Well, you, you need to qualify to join the union and you can't get that job to qualify unless you're in the union. It's a catch 22. I know it's, it's I know. hard to get an agent if you're not in the union. Yeah. And if you're not in the union, how do you get an agent? Well, let me just say this. Everybody who is in the union today at one point wasn't. Everybody with an agent today at one point wasn't. wasn't right. I think people want it prematurely. If you, I networked with everybody. And during the time I was taking voiceover classes, I was also in an all-day Saturday workout group. And the people in that workout group were seven, eight-figure voiceover actors. I mean, tremendously. And I'm like, why are you guys working out? And the reason they're working out is because they want to stay there. Right. And I rubbed elbows. So when I was getting to the point where I was ready for an agent, 
everybody knew who I was and I was referred by everybody. I allowed it to happen organically. So it, a lot of this business is definitely who you know and of course it's timing. Right. Put the whole thing together and add talent and you've got a winning combination. Right. Yeah, right place, right time. The opportunity comes. You got to deliver. Every agent yeah. wants to represent the next brilliant thing. The right. problem is, ninety nine percent of the demos that are submitted are not brilliant. The demo might be, but the but the cover letter isn't. The subject line. Sometimes the subject line prevents the agent from even listening. Seeking representation, you might as well say, "Agent, would you dump this? I suck." You don't say seeking representation. You say referred by, and that referred by had better be somebody influential. Right. An advertising executive, a casting director, a producer, a promo producer, not another actor, but somebody who hires talent. Right. Referred by Steven Ooh. Spielberg. Yeah. Problem that is, help, you yeah. really have to know Steven <laughs> Spielberg, Spielberg to use yeah, that name. Right. Yeah. But that's going to get you an immediate listen. But mm -hmm. seeking representation, you go into the pile of the two, three hundred other demos they've got that are also seeking representation. All right. Now, you also teach. I do. As you've been saying, you've been teaching for 30 years. Over. Yes. I'm old. <laughs> you're not as old as me. Yeah, but, but you're, I'm getting there. I'm working on it. You're, you're never going to catch me. I uh, hope I do. No. <laughs> anyway, the teaching is a, is a really important thing. Now, you uh, doing it for 30 years, I'm sure you have... You've refined your techniques, and what do you look for in students? I mean, not just somebody says, I want to do animation. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to take anybody that's going to say, I want to do animation. Yeah, they have to have an acting background. Mm -hmm. I don't even care if that's high school drama. Right. They have to have some kind of an acting background. Um, you know, it is acting. It's called voice acting for a reason. Right. So what do I do with my students? I teach them how to create, sustain, and remember original characters. That is basically my job. And I've got a three... Uh, step formula, how to create characters, how to remember them, how to sustain them, um, how to categorize them, how to uh, draw upon them. You know, there's a disease called in the car syndrome when you're driving away from that audition going, Why oh, didn't I, I, exactly, yeah. 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 And there's no cure for this. Right. But if you, if you know how to go into that little file cabinet, you know, that Rolodex in your head of characters and traits and personalities and just mix and match, you'll be able to create something original from something you've already done. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, usually if I if I'm called on to do a character, it's yeah. Somehow I always end up doing a New York accent, and which is the kiss of death. By I the way. know, I and I've been told that. Yeah, it's like whenever I go on to do an old person, it's I suddenly talk like this. Yeah, and, but you know what? Here I could take it up a little bit and I talk like this. And but here's what's really interesting: look at look at film today, and right. look at somebody who's like uh, Jane Fonda is eighty. Yeah, Does doesn't look it. <laughs> doesn't sound it either. Right. So old person is just. That generic stereotype that you have in your head, where Jane Fonda is an old woman. I love you, Jane. You're not I old. Know, You're just man. eighty. But she. <laughs> but that's listen. Eighty today is Jane Fonda. Right. I'm fifty four. This is fifty four today. Fifty four a generation ago was not this fifty four. So you need to think outside the box. You need to think personality and character, and not mm. generic and stereotype. Right. Good point. Once again, you got a question for Bob Bergen. Throw it in the chat room. Now, uh, you're doing some really cool stuff yes. with your classes. Oh, with the classes, yes. I am. Yes. I am. Yes. I mean, you can, we can talk about some of the cool stuff you're working on. I'm looking on. at beer on the floor that I'm not having because yeah. I have a gluten problem. Yeah. But I really, really want it. The, uh, it's not fair. Well, I can get you some wine if you want. Not, not, what, I'm, not what I'm working. Okay. okay. A porky can't stutter if I, if I uh, don't eat that drink. <laughs> <laughs> How can that possibly be? It I, smooths it out. Oh, I was yeah. doing. Right, I'll tell you what happened. Okay, tell me. I was at Margarita Mix, which is a fabulous studio in Hollywood. Yeah, and they serve margaritas. Good, good and I'm idea. doing a Looney Tunes session. Right. And I just what the heck? And I took a couple of sips, just a couple of sips. And I get to the mic, and instead of where's Daffy, I was like <laughs> like a car that won't won't start. Right. And they're <laughs> laughing, and I'm like, I'm serious, guys. I can't do this right now. Do it again. <laughs> I lost all dexterity, and the VP of Warner Animation goes, well, What do we do? And I said, I'll make a deal. Coffee. No, 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 no. I said, I'll make a deal. Um, we keep drinking and eating, and they had marker, the fajitas and whatever. I said, I'll come back tomorrow, and I won't charge you a second day. And they're like, cool. So we just made a party out of it. <laughs> That's great, I, man. I, I like that Way to one. think on your feet. Yeah. I have so, no idea if you asked me a question, but I told you about no, that was, drinking that, habits. That was that worked just fine. Okay, it's it, it shows people what goes on in this teaching. It, it's acting, acting, <laughs> yes, and teaching. Yes. Uh, so speaking of teaching, yes. you got a big 
cruise coming up. Tell us I, about the cruise. So, now, there's only a couple of sp spots left there. Uh, sp uh, the spots spot, 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 very good. Um, I I'm doing a class on a on a boat on a cruise, seven night mm -hmm. cruise with Mary Lynn Wisner. Oh, great uh, I, teacher. I, I, she's awesome. I did a uh, uh, voiceover cruise in 2006, just me, mm -hmm. and it was all, all animation. And that was only three days with one day, one class. This is seven seven days, seven nights uh, on the, on the ship. One full day of animation, one full day of commercial, and one full day of marketing and the business of the business. I think we have three spots left. Uh, however, that said, my workshop producer, Marion, will be taking names in case we get cancellations. We have right. a, a list to, to draw upon. And if people are interested, they can go to my website, bobbriggan.com, and I think on the homepage there's information. They can they can get to me or email me. or I'm on Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm so easy to get in touch with. Right. People get in touch with me all the time. I like being touched. It's important. It is important. We all everybody needs exactly, to be touched yes. a, li a little bit. That's right. Now, so where where is the boat going? Or oh, doesn't it matter? Everybody's everybody's going to be shoved into a cabin. Well, here no. Here's the thing. No, no. it's a California coastal cruise. So okay. you know, up and down the coast, there's a, the, the dirt. During the sea days, we're doing classes. Mm -hmm. During the port days, you're you're going to Baja. You're doing whatever wherever the ship goes, and you right. get off and have fun and go parasailing and do snorkeling and do all the things that you do on a cruise. Um, I'll be getting massages and drinking cocktails with funny umbrellas. Um, and and it's it's going to be intense. And Mary Lynn and I are going to make ourselves available during the cruise for, for you want to you know let's go over to this bar and ask questions about the business. I've got specific you know I, I need advice on. What it, we're going to be there. We're going to make ourselves available, and mm -hmm. it's a cruise. You know, yeah. we're going to have fun. Yes, that's all I know about cruises. Is I'm sitting there, and, the, and I'll be just looking at the girls going by, and the wife will go, "Would you like something to read?" Well, the, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, here's the deal. I mean, they're there. You don't want to disappoint them, right? Yeah, exactly. But you dress like that. I'm going to look uh, at you. Why like not? That. Uh, Ask them about their mic technique. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried that. One. Oh, is that? It, it actually worked. There you go. All right. Um, so and you've got a workshop coming up in San Diego. Yeah, that one. We, actually, this is the this is the platform that we're really announcing it for the first time. I oh, started talking. You about heard it. it here first. That's folks. right. So so Colette Sunderman, who is an animation voiceover mm -hmm. uh, casting uh, and and voice director, uh, and I will be teaching a class in San Diego. I think the third and fourth, mm -hmm. whatever that weekend is. So Saturday, I will be prepping the students to showcase for Colette on Sunday. We've done the class in L.A., we did it in Chicago, we did it in New York, and so this is the first time we're doing it in San Diego. And I think we only have two or three students signed up for that one, so there is room. Excellent. All it's right. more for advanced people. It's right. not a beginning class. It's more for right. advanced people, and it really gives students a really nice opportunity to um, to, to work with a, 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 a casting director and a voice mm -hmm. director. Right. So if someone wants to attend that one, same thing? Same thing. Get in touch with me. I'll pass them on to Marion, my, 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 my producer. Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break here. Our guest is... Bob Bergen, and uh, I'm sure we have a ton of questions. I hope so. Which Mr. Whitham will lay on us hey, after it, this break. Fake it, fake it. That's, That's right. what I thought of. There we'll be go. right back here on Voice Over Body Shot. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs, an all-new American crime story tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, crime, blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All righty, VoiceOver is ascent Oh, I'm sorry. VoiceOver Essentials' very own Lila brings you their latest sale items to get you through these hot summer days. And where is Lila? There she is right there. Right there. <laughs> All right. The Portabooth Plus Travel Bag, a messenger-style carry-on bag that holds your Plus and other travel necessities. It weighs just a few ounces, but it's amazingly tough thanks to its ripstop nylon construction. A 20 inches by 14 inches by 7 inches, it qualifies as carry-on luggage for every major domestic airline. Regular price, $59.95. Sale price, $10 off, 
$49.95. Plus, the Porta Booth Plus and Travel Bag Combo. Not only will you save money by buying a Porta Booth Plus booth and bag combo, Harlan bets that you'll find yourself using the travel bag even when you aren't taking your Plus along. It's that well designed and well organized. Regular price, $248.95. Sale price, $22.00. $228.95. It's amazing. Ten bucks off there too. That's twenty bucks off, actually. If only I could add <laughs> the multicolor LED voiceover recording sign. The one and only voiceover recording sign that you've seen George and I holding up here many times. Now with a 20 color LED illumination and a credit card sized remote. It's the sign that saved more relationships than all the disciples of Freud. Just be sure your significant others see it, and odds are when it lights up, they'll hopefully quiet down. Regular price $69.95, 10 bucks off on that sale price $59.95. And the adjustable desktop microphone stand. I don't think there's a more flexible desktop stand anywhere than this one. You can adjust the height, of course, but you can also change the weight of the stand. In addition, it can connect to both European and USA microphone threads. A rock solid accessory. Regular price $39.95. Five bucks off, $34.95. It's a great dog days of summer sale at voiceoveressentials.com. All you gotta do is go to the bottom of our homepage if you're watching on our homepage, and down there is a picture of Harlan, and at least it's his back, talking into a Porta Booth Pro, and what he is doing is he is giving you the opportunity to click that picture of him and it'll take you right to voiceoveressentials.com where you can buy every one of these items now while they're on sale. Thanks for being our sponsor for seven and a half years, Harlan. We love you. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. <laughs> Snails like it too. And we're back with Bob Bergen talking about animation and Porky Pig and the Union and all those sorts of things. But I know there are tons of questions out there that our vast live interactive audience all across the Fruited Plain and across the globe want to ask you right now. Hurt me. Hit me. With your rhythm stick. There we go. All right. <laughs> Mr. All right. Rhythm. All right, all right, all right. We got a bunch of them and they're flooding in, so I'm going to see if I can manage them all. First one that I see here is from Jace. Actually, oh, there's another one above it. Sorry. Thomas Machen, one of our lovely regular viewers. Thank you, Thomas. Are you producing in your own home studio or do you go to other studios to do your recording? At this point, I think that was pretty well answered, but... Yeah, and the reason is I, I never got into this to be a producer. Yeah. And as that trend started happening, I just decided I, I'm an actor. I don't want to produce. I'm too busy acting. So... I, I audition for my home studio. And, and, you know, some of the things like, come on in. <laughs> All right, never mind. You bleed your door to door. <laughs> you close the door. No. Um, yeah, when I do radio imaging, you know, I bet it's, it's raw records, yeah. but I don't really uh, do much to it other than record it. You record the, you read the liners. And yeah, then they, maybe two or three times. You know, if, if it's a brand new station, you want to establish the brand, so you give them options, and then yeah. you get the... The brand down, so you just kind of do one take and, and move on. But no, I'm not a producer. I dig it. I dig All it. right. Uh, next one's from Jay Sawyer. Hi, uh, Jay. Bob. Jay. <laughs> is it true that animation studios will not allow talent? This is geeky now. Yes, it is. Not allow talent to use equipment that uses tubes, mics, and any processors with tubes. Oh, that is. Is a this geeky something question. you've heard? Never. It's just, yeah, it's this, just, this never comes up in a studio. I've never yeah. seen an actor say, may I bring my tube? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, this is that. I don't know. No. It's, Sorry, Jay. Yeah, I mean. No, nobody's ever I mean, asked for anything to be. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it, from the talent perspective, what goes on on the other side of the glass is, yeah. like, is a total mystery. I will tell you this, that I know that I sound better on certain microphones. For instance, sure. um, I really wish Warner Brothers would record us on RCA ribbon mics. Because mm. that's how they were originally, but they were also recorded in sound stages back in the early days. Right. Much bigger rooms, much. That's why when you feelings. hear somebody Sam yell, you hear the yeah. echo. You right, do. you know, and and of course, booths and mics are so wonderful today. They're too wonderful. They're too yeah. dead. The room's right. too dead. Really dead. So you lose a little bit of life with the characters. But hey, that that studio is going to be used for a commercial 
in an hour or a promo. So they can't keep changing locations and mics. Um, I like uh, the, the U87, mm -hmm. the best for me, uh, the, the, the Sennheiser, the shotgun. I sound too tinny. Mm -hmm. But I don't go to a studio and say, change that microphone, will you? I just use whatever they give me. Let me ask about mic placement because in... in when you're recording animation, the rooms aren't those cavernous spaces yeah. anymore, but some of them are relatively they're, they're sizes. Rooms, mm -hmm. yeah. like the, do you usually have, you know, four or five feet of space yes. above your head in most cases? Yeah, and if it's a feature, it's a giant room. Right. It's a giant room. And then um, mic placement. I mean, you see how far away this is. Mm -hmm. Is that more common than being, you know, like up here Depends. for doing animation? I will work the mic for the scene. So if I'm doing a scene where the character is, you know, it's like a... Like one of these, I will get up to the mic and I'll do one of these. Hey, buddy. One yeah, of those things? because yeah. if you do that far away, even though they can adjust mm -hmm. to make that work, it's not going to have the same presence if you don't work the mic. So if you were to watch uh, Tom Kenny or or um, Jim Cummings or Tara Strong, watch these at, who don't even think about it, working the mics from line to line, from scene to scene, it is a dance. It is a choreography. And... It's intuitive. It's not something we're yeah. thinking about, but we're telling the story with our voice and our body, and we're giving the animators ammunition. We're giving them ideas and, and, and uh, I guess, influencing them, and they're influencing us. It's a, it's, a, it's a collaborative thing. I've even seen occasional setups where you get to see that cool behind-the-scenes video of you guys working, yeah. where they occasionally will have a close mic mm -hmm. and a far mic. For features, absolutely. They do it on features? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They just want to get it on the first take. Yeah, they don't I mean, have to when I'm working about... at Disney, Doc Kane, God bless him, he is the world's greatest mixer for animated features. Uh -huh. um, he knows the mic. He knows where you should be. Um, I take his direction as much as I take the director's direction. Mm -hmm. I, tr I trust him. Um, but those rooms are, are magical. And, you know, what they do behind closed glass, I, I don't want to touch it. I, mm -hmm. I can't touch it. It's, 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 a, it's, it's genius. Not my job. No kidding. Yeah, exactly. Tom Machen has a great question. Tom. Yeah, he says, do you still get coaching or mentoring? Sure. Of course. I mean, so do Broadway actors who are doing, you know, Broadway at night during the day. They're doing dance and, and movement and singing and whatever. Absolutely. Uh, most Oscar winning actors have in their contract that their acting coach will be on the set for them. For some reason, voiceover actors have this arrogance that I'm a working voiceover actor, I've got an agent, I've got a demo, I've got a website, right. therefore I don't need to grow or learn. And that is the, that, that's the secret to failure. Of course I, I coach. I will, whether it's an acting coach that I want to get, you know, a little, I get lazy and I want somebody to kick my butt a little bit, or it's, I, I'm, it's a new promo mm -hmm. uh, a station or network and they're looking for a voice and I want someone to be a little bit more objective. So sure, of course, all smart artists still can learn absolutely and that's how you stay that's what professionals do sure i mean insurance agents have to do continuing education uh, doctors and, and lawyers there you go there should be a state license for animation I think voices so. <laughs> i think so get we, your ce credits there in. you go we this may have been covered and i apologize that's okay did, did you mention at what point precisely in your career did the union come into play for you what, uh what? i had studied voiceover for four years with every person that offered a class in Los Angeles and through a connection I made when I was 16 when I was 18 I got a call from this connection who said if you really want to work in cartoons I might have a job for you I'm casting this Spider-Man cartoon yeah I went down I auditioned I got Taft Hartley which enabled me to get my my union card I already yeah. had an agent so I called the agent and I said you get 10% of this job you did nothing for me to get. And he was thrilled because he didn't have to make a phone call on my behalf but he still got 10%. So that is how I got into the union. Just you know, not without going down the rabbit hole too far. Tom, uh Taft Hartley. Yes. What does that mean? What does Blame. that mean in a Taft nutshell? Hartley basically means that the producer will send a letter to the union that says of all the people I have auditioned or thought of for this part the one who's most uh, qualified I feel is non-union. So that allows that producer to hire the non-union actor and that enables you to join the union at, at that, that point, point is it now mandatory mm -mm. as the actor to you join just the have union? to join before your next job i believe before oh, your next union job okay yeah. cool i learned a lot of stuff just yeah. then all right cool t-man asks an interesting question here because i don't think it it sounds like he's living you know in in mad men yeah mm -hmm. he says uh do you still audition in your agent's office or on a speaker phone um most agents in Los Angeles are kind of weaning away from the 
in office auditions. Uh, some of them actually insist on you going in to read. Right. Uh, but no, uh, I audition 99% of the time in my home, and, and there's never been a speakerphone. So, yeah, we never did that. All right. This one's from Dave. Dave. Hello, I'm a VO from NYC. Animation character VO is my niche. And here's the question. Yes. Can I make it without going to L.A.? So my question for Dave would be, you tell me, buddy, how many people are making a living in animation in New York? Um, there is animation work in New York. I think PBS Kids is in New York. I think Nickelodeon does some stuff in New York. There's some anime in New York. But Cartoon Network is out here. Nickelodeon's out here. Disney's out here. Sony's out here. Fox is out here. So... Um, you got to go where the work is. If you really want to work in animation, not only come out here, but train out here because the people training you in New York are not working every day in animation. You might be a terrific voiceover actor, but you come out here and when it comes to the demos, I hear demos. I heard one this morning. It, the actress was so versatile. It was just her doing funny voices. I didn't hear Bob's Burgers. I didn't hear Adventure Time. I didn't hear Archer. I didn't hear Robot Chicken. I'm not asking for her to sound like curtain, certain characters right. or current characters. What makes her different? No, what yeah, makes her relevant. relevant. Okay. I want, I, I want to hear in that demo that you know what they're buying today at Nick Kids, at PBS Kids, at Disney Channel at Disney XD, that you're aware of what the current programming is, that if you have an audition for Colette Sunderman or Christy Reed or Charlie Adler, you know their product, you know what they're looking for in superheroes versus cartoony, right. you know that uh, uh, We Bear Bears is looking for is not looking for cartoony voices, so you it's need very to, conversational. You yeah. need yeah. to know what the industry is demanding. What they're not demanding is someone who can do 5,000 voices. They're looking for brilliant actors who know how to adjust what they do for today's market. It's sort of like commercials. Yeah. If it was 1978 when I started studying voiceover, commercials were all announced already. Yes. And I didn't have that. I, I, I wish. I was waiting for my voice to change. I'm still waiting for my voice to change. <laughs> and I don't have that lovely, deep, rich voice that was in back then. And then right. all of a sudden it became conversational. And guy next door. Well, that's when I started working because that's who I am. I can't be, I can't be inauthentic. I can't not, I can't be what I'm not. So for animation, man, all I got to do is turn on the TV and watch the product. That that's what they're looking for. But again, when I hear those demos where it's the same characters over, same little elf, over and over and over, make your elf original. And how does that fit in today's market? That was a long-winded answer to probably not in New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's legit. It's yeah. a good answer. I mean, it's it's, it's not that simple. Um, Thomas Machen also lots Boy, he of questions a lot for of us. You'll ask a lot of questions. It's but free. We, but we appreciate it. We we ask you to ask your Please, questions. Please bring it on. We appreciate yeah. it. So you do. Um, he says you do so many different voices for many different programs. How many other VO actors have been your students that we might actually recognize? Good There's question. a very good question. Uh, Roger Craig Smith. Um, Max Middleman, uh, Quentin Flynn, uh, Misty Lee. That's off the top of my head. That's a pretty good but list. But the thing is, <laughs> it's not going to be many. Yeah. But uh -huh. again, when each one of those actors came to the mic, and I never tell them this on the first right. day of class because I don't want to swell their head. Right, right. But I'll hear them when, when a teacher hears brilliant talent, whether it's a sculpting teacher or a writing teacher or a dance teacher, when you see brilliance, it is so exciting. <laughs> and and when you see one of your, I mean, uh, J.P. Karliak uh, was a student, I think about 10 years ago. And in the last Looney Tunes series, he was doing Wile E. Coyote next to me. Wow. That was that, really, really That's cool. when teaching feels good. It feels amazing. Yeah. And the thing is, he was another one. The first time at the mic, I'm like, oh, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> you know, it's the it factor. You right. know the it factor from the moment they start talking. Some people just got it. That's right. All right. JV Martin asks, was that, uh, I moved that one. JV, oh, come okay. back, no, please. We're, we're going, we're going right to Doug. Okay, bye, JV. I love you. We'll, mean we'll, it. We'll come back to that. All one. right. Uh, uh, the announcer. Hi, Doug. Mr. Doug Turkell says, "I'm a longtime union member. Yes, but I understand the difficulty that successful non-union talent face when trying to make the transition to union. Yeah, is the union doing anything to make it easier for folks to make the leap? MPS, thank you for all you do with support." talent and the union you're a mensch i'm a mensch <laughs> um oh it's such a loaded question so when i got into the business you couldn't get work unless you were a union right you i mean agents wouldn't wouldn't 
listen to you. You couldn't get, you couldn't even audition for a job unless you're a union. So much of voiceover today is non-union. It's a vicious cycle. Um, I look at it this way. I remember when I first started teaching 20 years ago around the country, and I would see people not interested in the union. I'm like, what do you mean you're not interested in the union? Don't you want a pension when you're 65? Don't you want health benefits? Don't you want residuals? And it was like I was talking a foreign language to them because all their auditions were non-union. They saw very few union opportunities. Well, animation is still union, so I, t I still teach the union aspects of animation. But I was like, guys, work with me here. I don't understand this because a professional actor wants a career in this, and that career means benefits. It took five, six years for them to educate me that, well, we don't see many union opportunities. And they were trying to communicate with the union. The union wasn't interested in them. In fact, they, the union treated them kind of nasty because they were like, oh, you're, you're, you're scum, you're scabs, you're non-union, blah. Mm. Um, and we're living the results today where the majority of voiceover is now non-union. Non um, I don't know if it's going to change. I would like to see it change. I'm going to try. I've got a proposal in in play i don't i don't know what's going to come from it but it's it's in the hands of the powers that be we'll see what happens um here's my concern my concern is it is this machine we're looking at right now that made everything non-union it brought the non-union voiceover industry to everybody on a silver modem mm -hmm. so let's say we bring in more people to the union more work to the union but every day somebody brand new pops up and goes i'll do it for 50 bucks i make minimum wage I make fifteen dollars an hour. I can speak into a microphone for less than an hour and get fifty bucks. That I hit the I hit the lottery. How do you compete with that? The answer is you can't. You really honestly can't. I think we have to come to that conclusion that if you want to be a union professional actor, there is that option for you. You cannot have it both, both ways. ways. Mm, so right. if animation is something that you want, you want to do do network promos. There, there are certain things in this industry, if you want to be in a Disney feature, you're going to be a union actor. If you want to work in voiceover, there are other things for you. I'm not, I haven't thrown in the towel yet, but I got my hand on it because it's going to take both sides to say, yes, I'm willing to do that. The problem is I don't see the non-union side willing to compromise because both of them have to. Right. So it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. And if, it's grown so much. I mean, there's so much more work out there. Than technically, there the yeah. business grew, and it grew without the union doing anything about it. But this is not new. Right. This is not new. Way back many decades ago, sound took silent movies away. Silent movies took vaudeville away. Every time technology brings the next thing, everybody doing the last thing says, it'll never change. I'm not going to let... And they, and they don't adapt with it, and they die off. Well, the same thing is happening today with voiceover technologically. But the concept of making a living at voiceover is relative today. I live in L.A. It's an expensive area to live in. If I lived in Iowa, I might be able to make a fraction of what I make and have a much bigger house. So it's all relative. But what is it you want out of your career? And what does career mean to you? It means something different to everybody. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a very... It's a very Layered, uh, Doug, we could talk for hours. <laughs> I wish I could crack that beer. <laughs> That's so true. T-Man says, if one were to voice for anime, mm -hmm. would that be union work? I'm just curious. It's not my forte. It's like saying if someone were to do a commercial, would that be union work? If it's a union commercial. commercial right. So yeah. if, it's, if it's a union it's anime job. categorically one correct, or the other. Correct. But I will tell you that, you know, anime, even union, the contract's not fabulous. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I don't re I don't even know what it is right now because I don't do a lot of it, but I want to guess like sixty seventy dollars an hour guaranteed two hours work. Hmm. Uh, do you no think that's something that's trending in any direction? Or no, is it not? Really? No, it's just I mean it's I think just a different I, scale. no. I mean I don't think they renegotiated that contract for years. Hmm. And before that contract, they were getting paid five bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. So um, people don't go into anime to get rich. They mm -hmm. go into anime because it's fun. Yeah. It's really cool. They'll make their money on the weekends at conventions. And the anime fans are the most wonderful, loyal, diehard fans in all of animation. I will sit yeah. at, a, at a fan convention and I will have, you know, Looney Tunes and Disney stuff and whatever. But Lupin the Third or No Face from, a, from what was that, Spirited Away. Yeah. Um, and they go crazy. And I started bringing those pictures because I didn't even know they were worthy of bringing until people would say... Right. 
do you have anything from Akira? I'm like, D did I do that? Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> give Actually, me. Let me ask you. Yeah. I liked Akira. I'm not a huge fan of that you genre. You ask but me who Akira I played. Was inc Can you possibly remember what you played on that? Okay, do you remember the movie? Yeah. Do you remember there was a scene with a boy in a floating bubble? Yeah. Yeah, I, I gave him sort of a Marlon Brando voice. Yeah. I just, yes. I just sort of sounded like his big cheeks. So sort of, sort of sounded like Marlon Brando, even though I think he was like nine. You know, so so, so that was. A, I want to say his name was Mitsubishi, Matahari, yeah, something yeah. Emmy. Yeah, I wouldn't know the characters. It name. was like eighty something. It was a, it long, was a time long time ago. Time ago yeah. All I know is that Roger Ebert listed it as one of his all time favorite movies, and uh, that oh, which blew me away. Yeah. Because I was like, people see these things? I mean, that's back then. People's, I was a fan of Speed Racer. I didn't know Speed Racer was anime when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It was just a cool cartoon where people didn't pause. Same here. Yeah. Same here, yeah. And their mouths were very, very small. And, 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 for, and for no reason, they'd go, ha! Because there was that extra flap <laughs> right. that they had to fill with something. <laughs> we got time for two more questions here. Oh, man. Okay. Did we get JV, JV we'll, back? We'll get two we, more he, questions he, and JV a statement. JV gets the last comment. Right. Well, well, you get the last Two questions and a statement. All right. All right. Um, this one comes from... J Horse back black. This is a short one, actually. Bob, okay. do you teach uh, and coach commercial or only animation? Only animation. I tried to teach a commercial class. Gosh, about twenty something years ago, and on, on week three of a six week class, I was so bad. I refunded their money and took them out for dinner because I was just <laughs> dreadful. There are so many really, really great commercial classes in in, in L.A., and yeah. I was not one of them. All right. Knowing your specialty is yeah. important. Throw in Dave Smith's question. Yeah, Come Dave, on, Dave. Dave's, uh, does Bob offer Skype or Zoom sessions for your workshops or one-on-one -on -one sessions? Or I don't. Is it strictly a face-to-face -face I don't. Thing? I can't do it through a computer screen. I need this. You know, I need this. And that's just me. I think Richard Horvitz does Skype. I think uh, Mick Winger does Skype. Debbie Derryberry. They're all fantastic. But I really need this one-on-one -on -one sort of connection. Right. Uh, it's me. It's not the, the actor. Um, and... I don't even do that many privates because my, my schedule doesn't allow it. So yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, <laughs> well we, let's just say we've JV waited, Martin. Waited for right, JV come on, JV. Better be good. Who's been on this show? He said, great guy. JV's awesome. Yeah. We love he, JV. He said it's not a really a question. It's really a comment. What? It's a salute. <laughs> it's a salute to Mr. Bergen from all the voice actors who were underrepresented at the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences prior to your arrival as governor oh, that's sweet. of the Performers Peer Group. Thank you for all you've done on our behalf. Voice actor group hug. Uh, well, that's really Bob sweet. In, in the, the middle. middle. Thank you. Well, here's the deal. The, uh, the, the, the TV Academy actually did have a, uh, a, a voiceover Emmy um, before I joined. But uh, what I was able to do, we had the voiceover Emmy, which included everything. So you've got Sigourney Weaver, who is doing a wonderful narration, competing against uh, Dan Castellaneta doing 20 voices. <laughs> Tony Car I was like, Don't! I was like, these shouldn't belong together. So I was able to separate narration and character voice. Um, I, wow. I, I brought in, this year, I brought in uh, commercial voiceover. I brought in announcers, promo announcers. So, um, yeah, but so thank you, JV. I really appreciate that. And yeah. if he hadn't said that, I would have known that about what Bob does. So there you really go. It's cool to hear that yeah. little there you go. part of behind the scenes stuff you're doing for the business. Yeah. It's Absolutely. cool going over to the Academy, too, with all those great statues. The there. Academy is yeah. fun. And, you know, go to the website. People will be surprised that they qualify to join at least one of the tiers. And, right. and it's, it's a nice little community. There's only 2,000 plus, a little over 2,000 performers in, at, who belong to the TV Academy. Excellent. Well, Bob, thank you so thank much you, for friend. being with us. It's great fun. to see you. Without beer. I had no beer whatsoever. Neither did we. I know. But we will. All right. Um, Curls your mustache. It, 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 it does help. <laughs> um, so, again, if they want to get a hold of you, go to your website. Go to my which website, bobbergen.com, or at Bob Bergen on Twitter. Uh, if they can remember this, voclassbooking at gmail.com. That is Marion, my producer, who does all my out-of-town classes, and she'll take care of everybody. Excellent. All right. Cool. Well, we'll see you again soon. Sounds good. Nate, yours. Uh, <laughs> All right, we'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right. Hey, thanks everybody for your questions. I knew I would get a lot of questions from our vast audience and they didn't disappoint. They did not. They did not. <laughs> well, that was fabulous. Next week, who's on? We've got Paul Pape. Paul Pape. Now, if you don't know who Paul Pape is, you're going to learn. He's been on the show before. Guy is really an active guy who, unlike Bob, also became a producer. Mm-hmm. And he's going to talk about all the stuff he does. And he was active with the union, and he does a lot of cool stuff like ADR and some other things. So we're going to talk mm-hmm. about some cool stuff with him next week. Uh, on August 27th, here in the studio, uh, the voice caster in Burbank Right. Uh, Catherine Haran will be here. She is Very nice. the casting director and a coach, and that'll be more stuff on how to improve your performance and get hired. Mm-hmm. Gotta like it. Uh, September 3rd, uh, it's Labor Day. Despite the fact that we've done shows on Labor Day, we're not doing a show on Labor Day this year. Yay! Anyway. And then September... <laughs> Sorry, guys. And, and we sep- got reruns. Yeah. And September 10th, it's Rosh Hashanah. Mrs. Leonard will not let me do a show back here, <laughs> Ooh, yes. no matter what, but I probably uh, wouldn't anyway. And then on September 17th, way in the future, Cat Cressida will be here. All right. So Sounds we've got, good. we got it lined up and some time off, which you and I badly need. <sighs> anyway, who are our donors of the week? Man, we got a lot of familiar names, folks. These guys keep sending money because they subscribe like Tracy H. Reynolds and Andrew Kaufman, Kaufman, sorry, Andrew, who I'm going to see in Colorado in a couple of days. That's fun. Antland Productions. We know our buddy, Uncle Roy. And uh, also on that list, skipping down the list, down, 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 Graham Spicer. Thanks, Graham. Brian Roush. And also Eric Aragoni. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for everybody. (laughs) Who? (laughs) Eric who? Jack DeGolia even. (laughs) Still sending us money. Stop it, Jack. Gotta love it. Jeez. You're doing a podcast. I am. It's called the Pro Audio Suite. It's extremely geeky, but so we also geeky, yeah. but we we really uh, get to do some cool interviews with some pretty big time uh, non voiceover sometimes. Mm-hmm. Really more into the world of music and video and audio production, and we cover a lot of ground. So check it out, the right. Pro Audio Suite. Right. And if you watch the show on YouTube, if you're not if if you happen to be watching the show on YouTube now, six weeks from now. Mm-hmm. The show log is there. Jack DeGolia and right. Dan Sutton are out there. Today, they were writing a lot. Everything that could possibly be said. Bam, bam, Bob bam, bam, said bam, a lot. Bam. There was a lot to it. Yeah, yeah. And it will help you get right to the answer that you're looking for that was discussed on this evening's show. Uh, we're here every Monday night, most of the time, except for the first two weeks in September. And uh, if you'd like to be here in our audience, you can do that. That's right. You Just write to us, us at email. theguys at vobs.tv and write audience in the subject line and that will get you in here if we like you uh let's see here oh show us your booths this is whose booth is this that's howard parker howard parker's the guy booth. you probably don't wow. know but he you know you you definitely nice, heard his voice nice digs it's really nice wow it's like a fishbowl in the middle <laughs> of his living room <laughs> yeah we want to see your booths you know the your creative creations out there because hey you know you've You've made your home voiceover studio. We want to see how creative you've been with that. That one I'm You're, definitely proud of. That that you should be. Quite a cool is, project. That is quite the VO palace. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
What else we got here? Oh, we need to thank, thank our sponsors. sponsors. Yes, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. Vo to go go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And Jake, J. Michael Collins Demos. All thank right. you, everybody. All right. Well, we need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan, for getting great guests like Bob Bergen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jack Daniel on the chat room duty and all his help on YouTube. Our technical director who's got it down. It's dialed. She's dialed it in. Sue Merlino did a great job tonight. Uh, Jack DeGolia, Dan Sutton on the show notes. And, of course, Lee Pinney for being Lee Pinney. He was in the chat room tonight. Well, he was, he was he back. He was hanging out with us. You come out and hang out hey, with Lee. us, Lee, for crying out loud. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We're here to help, guys. Technically, with the performance stuff, with the business stuff, you need to learn it. We're here to help you out here on VoiceOver Body Shop every Monday night. And we'll be back next Monday night with more stuff with Paul Pape. So that does it for us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Have remember, a great week. Yes. If it sounds good. It is good. Hey, I remembered.